Let's bring in uh, Walter Isaacson, Tulane University professor, advisory partner at uh, Perella Weinberg. Walter, always good to see you. Good morning. Uh, we'll uh, morning, tackle Bob. trade in a couple of minutes here. But uh, Secretary Pompeo just tweeted that NATO is the most successful alliance in history, and all allies have committed to extend that success with increased defense spending. Are you noticing any real erosion in NATO today? I think everybody's a bit rattled, but NATO, as Secretary Pompeo said, is crucially important. I think President Trump does have a point about this uh, Russian uh, pipeline uh, to Germany because that undermines a little bit of what NATO is trying to do as well. So I'm glad he pushed that forward. You know, when he stands next to Chancellor Merkel and says we have a great relationship and a great relationship with Germany and uh, he's rattled them so much. I think you just have to separate some of the noise and static from the, the truth of the relationship, which is that NATO is crucially important. And I think Pompeo may be a sending a signal to Trump as well as to NATO. Walter, have we seen this before? I mean, it seems like either diplomacy matters or it doesn't matter. The words that leaders use about allies and enemies matter or they don't matter. Is there a historical precedent that you can look to for leaders saying one thing in terms of how uh, they're talking about or treating allies and then saying a different thing and, and how it all shakes out in the end? No, we haven't really seen this before. Because in the toolbox of American diplomacy, we have everything from, you know, missiles to trade, but we also have words. And words are used as a tool in diplomacy, and people tend to use them carefully. I guess you go back to Ronald Reagan calling Russia an evil empire, but that was used very purposefully. I have a friend, Romesh Ratnasar, who wrote a book about that very sentence almost. And people were using words carefully, and that was uh, productive. I'm certainly a little bit unnerved, as most people are, about Trump's blustery style. But I guess we just have to get used to it. Walter, I want to go back to the pipeline that you just mentioned, because it seems to me optics, noise, delivery aside, when you're talking about pushing NATO members to increase their spending, that implies stronger forces, more military might against Russia. When you're talking about going after an $11 billion gas pipeline that would bring Russian uh, gas into Europe, you're going after the very heart of the Russian economy. Delivery aside, that seems to me it's a much more hawkish stance against Russia ahead of that meeting next week by President Trump. Well, that's the thing about Donald Trump. It's somewhat unpredictable. That is a hawkish stance against Russia. I actually think it's a a valid position, which is that if Russia does control some of the energy supplies to Germany, and more importantly, that pipeline allows them to cut out Eastern Europe or the Crimea, Ukraine, others, those type of things give Russia an incredible leverage. Uh, I'm sitting here in New Orleans. We're starting to export a lot of liquefied natural gas. I'd rather the gas to Germany come from Louisiana and not from Russia. And Gerhard Schroeder, the former a German minister, uh, having you know such a close, I think he's one of the leaders of this Russian firm building this pipeline. I, I'd rather Trump focus like a laser on that rather than getting into a trade war, causing BMW, a German company, to take its production facilities out of South Carolina. Focus on this pipeline. That's not a good thing for uh, the Western alliance. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.